Normally on this channel, I focus on talking about movies, but today I'm gonna give you my 10 favorite TV shows of all time, plus a whole lot of honorable mentions. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your 10 favorite TV shows of all time. Of course, our lists are going to be totally different because it's not the 10 best TV shows of all time. It's our 10 favorite shows of all time, so our lists are going to be wildly different. As I go into this, I have not seen Game of Thrones, Gotham, Walking Dead, The Sopranos, The Wire, and any number of other shows you might think that I would love but I just can't watch every single TV show that is out there. One final thing before we get started, this video is brought to you by my supporters over on Patreon. Every single month I have them vote on a video that they want me to make. This month they picked my 10 favorite TV shows of all time. Over on Patreon I do a weekly AMA Q&A. There's only about 10 people normally in there so I can answer everybody's questions. There's some exclusive content. This fall I even have a couple of fantasy football leagues with my supporters over on Patreon. If you want to check it out to see if it's right for you, you can do so at the link down below. Let's get started with some honorable mentions. Our first batch is going to be shows I love, but I haven't seen the whole thing yet. First one up is going to be Justified. This is a Timothy Oliphant modern day western. All the seasons I've seen of it thus far, I love. Walton Goggins is in the mix. There's always a great set of cast every single season of the show. Next up is going to be Key and Peele. I just absolutely love the segments of the show that I've seen. But I've never actually sat and watched a full episode of the show. I've just watched dozens and dozens of segments on YouTube. Next up is going to be House. It's a show that's kind of based off Sherlock Holmes, but it's a medical procedural about a cranky, sarcastic, mean-spirited doctor. I absolutely loved the first four seasons, but as it kind of moved into the later ones, I just couldn't keep up with it. So even though I'd rewatched the first four seasons on loop for several different years, I, I never finished watching the show and I feel like I need to rewatch the entire thing to get to the end of it. Speaking of shows kind of like that, Battlestar Galactic, well, not like House, but a show that I absolutely loved, watched the first half of the series and got to a certain point in time where I took a huge break and then I felt like I needed to rewatch the entire thing to finish it and I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but this is one of the coolest sci-fi shows of the 21st century. Amazing serialized storytelling. Then one final one here is Community. Such a creative, interesting show that morphed heavily as it went along. It was kind of a fun little sitcom at the beginning, and then it started going pretty bonkers at the end of the first season, and that's what it continued with. Some of the most inventive storytelling, creative ideas that I've ever seen on a show like this, but another one, I haven't finished watching the last couple of seasons, and if you don't know, the Russo brothers were heavily involved with this show. With that said, let's get started with our top 10. Coming in at number 10 is gonna be Parks and Rec. This is a show that started off with kind of a dud of a first season. It was only six episodes long, so it was a bit of a pilot season. Picked up quite a bit in the second season, and then it took off going into the third season. They dropped one of the weaker characters, brought in two fantastic characters into the mix, and it just turned into a fan fantastic show that was consistently funny for me all the way up until the end. I know a lot of people thought there's a dip in quality in the last few seasons. I didn't think it dipped in quality all that much. I was still pretty engaged with the show. They weren't as strong as some of those middle seasons that were the best, but still worked for me. What makes the show work is just a set of fantastic characters that are just so odd, quirky, and interesting and have great dynamics with each other. This is a show that's so good that Chris Pratt is a side character on it and you don't mind. Uh, you want him in that position even though he's hilarious inside of the show. Everyone else is also hilarious. Ron Swanson would be my personal favorite character on the show, but everyone, once you got past season two and you dropped Mark Brandanowitz, I thought was great on the show, consistently funny, consistent quality, all the way up to the end for me. Next up is The Shield. This is a show that takes the good cop, bad cop dichotomy, throws it out, we just got bad cops here in this district that's trying to like keep control of the crime and the way that our strike force is trying to do that is by getting involved with the crime themselves and make sure that they're allowed to keep doing what they're doing. At the center of it is Michael Chiklis as Vic Mackey, this cop that has all the charisma and leadership skills to be a great cop, but he has this corruption inside of him that he just is addicted to getting in on the action and being in control and making things happen and it takes him to really dark places. What makes this show so great 
is it's much like Breaking Bad, a show that's intricately crafted from the very beginning. Things that happen in the pilot episode matter all the way up to the last episode. In the middle of like, I think season four, there's a single shot in the middle of it. They just pan over and you look down a hallway and they show someone and it's a throwaway shot, you think, and it turns up it's the most important shot of the season as it leads to the events of the last three seasons of the show. And the whole thing plays out like that where every detail happens. There's not a wasted moment. It's all built all towards this finale. Doesn't drag out too long. There aren't extra seasons. The tension just keeps building and building and building and it starts really intense. The like what happens at the end of the pilot episode is just like, wait, that's what the protagonist just did at the beginning of this show. So if you haven't checked this one out, if you're a fan of like Breaking Bad, you should absolutely check out The Shield. Number eight is Seinfeld. Back in the 90s, everyone would always ask, do you like Friends or do you like Seinfeld? Most people enjoyed both shows. I was always a Seinfeld person. It kind of abandons the soap opera side of Friends and just focuses in on really intricate observational humor in a show that's not really about anything other than these characters just kind of being really selfish in New York City. What I love about what they do with this show is that most of the episodes have one main plot line and a couple subplots, so every cast member has something going along with them, and then the show just builds up all the way to this big finale where all the plot lines come together, leading to one final punchline, one final clever line that ties it all together. It's made in such a way that it's not just a bunch of kind of cheap gags, it's not even plot driven, it's intricate joke driven leading to one final payoff and just so clever in the way that it was done that it didn't rely on story arcs, character arcs for the most part, or it doesn't really require character arcs. There's story arcs that happen in certain seasons about them trying to pitch the Seinfeld show inside of the show. You have things like that that happen, but the characters themselves don't really change. They're just as selfish at the end of the show as they are at the beginning. It's just such a distinct, unique, a show out there that I have just always loved and admired. All right, real quick, I'm going to give you five more honorable mentions. These are TV shows that I absolutely loved when they started, but they kind of went off the rails at some point in time. First off is going to be Lost. I just thought the first season of Lost was fantastic. One of the first seasons of a show ever. The second season I thought was pretty great. Third one, pretty good. And then the last three seasons, I thought they just got so convoluted and pretty clearly they didn't know where they were going and they didn't know how to answer the questions from the first half of the show. So by the time it got to the end, I kind of left me with a sour taste in my mouth. Not when I first watched it. I actually really enjoyed the finale when I first watched it. But on reflection, I was like, oh, that is... That is not a satisfying finale for the show that they set up with such an amazing first season. Speaking of shows with a great first season, Heroes. The first season of Heroes is fantastic, and the rest of the show I find totally unwatchable. I mean, I have never seen a show just go off the rails so incredibly fast as the show Heroes did, as it did kind of this real world, serialized version of what if superheroes started to exist, and then at going into the second season, instead of moving the story forward, now that we discover that there are heroes, there are villains, let's move forward, it just started looping back and it wanted to re-answer the questions in the first season. Was, what are you doing? And she just killed their show. Next one on here is going to be Dexter. Now, Dexter's a show that had a lot of really good seasons, and I strongly debated putting Dexter in my top 10. Maybe I should have. It's a show about a serial killer who only kills other serial killers, and I think about four of the seasons are pretty fantastic. I mean, just really good, interesting stuff that kind of, as it goes along, they build tension as he's trying to not get caught. But then there's, there's about half the other seasons that are almost unwatchable, and it builds up to one of the worst TV show finales of all time. The whole season, the last season was pretty bad, and what what they did in the last two episodes just felt like well, being brutally murdered by Dexter. Another one on here is going to be Homeland. Homeland is a show that's tricky because the starting premise I don't think it was very sustainable. And so they ran it great for season one. I actually thought season two was pretty great. And they tried to continue this plot line that involved kind of a, a guy being held by terrorists for years and he comes back and there's a lot of questions. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? We know some things that the people around him don't know and the investigation into him. 
There just wasn't really a way to continue that plot line for very long, and they continued into the third season. I thought the third season was just absolutely dreadful. The fourth season picked back up, and then I just I started to lose interest once again after that. Once again, a, a very great concept that maybe just should have been a limited series. And then finally, my Arrowverse shows, Arrow and Flash. Uh, I, at times, have absolutely loved Arrow and Flash, and then have been really let down by the more recent season. It seems to me that as they started doing more and more shows, their attention got spread too thin and because of that the quality of the original show started to dip quite a bit maybe it was just also the fact that they were just the inherent into the show of Arrow is that they had all these plot twists at the end of the episodes and you can only do that for so long if you go back to one of my very early pre Sean Chandler talks about videos on this channel I reviewed the first season of Arrow and I mentioned that like I don't know how long they can keep doing this big twist big twist big twist between they're gonna run out of ideas and just start doing dumb stuff well, season three is where they ran out of ideas and started to do dumb stuff. Coming in at number seven is Breaking Bad. I'm actually currently right now re-watching Breaking Bad. I'm in the middle of the fourth season and it is a show that re-watch is really great because it's so deliberately calculated in the way the story was put together, the way they crafted the plot lines, that things that happen, much like The Shield, that happened in the early seasons, matter later on. So when I first watched the show, you don't pick up on just how much from the early seasons is driving everything in the later seasons. Especially if you watch it over a period of time, you can kind of forget some of that stuff. But right now, binge watching it in the span of about a month, you remember everything and how it plays back together. And also knowing where the show goes, you watch a decision at a kitchen table, a conversation between Hank and Walter White, and you're like, oh no, this, this is this is it right here. This is where everything turns. And throughout the whole series, you just know all of these moments absolutely matter. Add into the mix, of course, fantastic performances. Add into the mix a concept that shouldn't be so interesting. I shouldn't be compelled or like to find a TV show about a science teacher who becomes crystal meth cook so compelling, but the characters are just so nuanced and broken and have so many dimensions to them that you just can't stop watching this show and I am absolutely loving binge watching it again right now. Next up is The X-Files. This show isn't just fun as a conspiracy theory thriller, as an investigation into weird creatures and paranormal activity. It's also a very important show as it was one of the shows that started to move things away from just episodic television towards serialized television. And this was kind of the hybrid model as about a quarter of the episodes tied into this kind of big meta arc about the US government conspiracies about aliens. And then the rest of the show was kind of more episodic freak of the week episodes. And maybe my ratio there isn't quite right, but it had this arc that you could put it all together and you slowly learn the pieces of what was really going on and they'd have these big twists and turns all throughout the entire series. The real magic here is kind of our central cast inside of it and the chemistry between Mulder and Scully and just like two perfect castings, two characters just written in such a way that they take what could be a fairly commonplace little procedural about FBI agents looking into stuff and it takes it to that next level because they're so interesting themselves. Of course, thrown into the mix like Skinner, Cinegarette, Smoking Man, Deep Throat, all these other people thrown into the mix that just keep things interesting. And it was also a show that wasn't afraid to take some just bonkers risks. So there's comedic episodes thrown into it. There's black and white episodes. There's a cops based episode. They did really wild and crazy things because they weren't afraid to make a fool of themselves in an attempt to try and do great stuff in doing so made one of the best TV shows of all time. Bringing us into the top five is Daredevil. As you might not know, kind of a big fan of comic book movies and TV shows and to me Daredevil is the best of the bunch. They have great characters, fantastic dialogue and amazing fight choreography and all of this was pretty well in place right out of the gate, they'd figured out the right tone and vibe for this show. You see Wilson Fisk played by the great Vincent D'Onofrio as this kind of broken, terrifying character right there in the first few episodes. The second episode of the show has that incredibly memorable, long, single take, hall fight scene inside of it. And as the show went along, it just kind of got better and better. Season two, they brought the Punisher into the mix and I just loved, loved 
loved, 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 loved what they did with the Punisher in season two of the show. And then season number three was probably the best of all of them as they had a even better intricate story throughout the season as you have the return of Kingpin as his master plan trying to make all this stuff happen. And all these intricate plot lines tying together, all leading up to a finale. All of this leading to one of the most heartbreaking cancellations of all time as they had such a fantastic third season. And then a month later, it was canceled and my heart was ripped out of my chest. I don't know how they could, they could do that to me. I, I love this show, just absolutely love it. Number four is 24. If you know what 24 is, essentially it's a show that takes place in real time. So each season is 24 episodes, each one spanning one hour of real time as Jack Bauer attempts to stop terrorist threats. I just always thought this was just such a great concept for a show that built into it is a sense of urgency and tension because you can't just cut away. You can't just have breaks. You have to feel the urgency of everything that takes place inside of the show. Add to the mix. You get the fantastic Kiefer Sutherland as Jack Bauer in the mix. Um, President Palmer, another great character in the early seasons of the show. It was one that wasn't afraid to do big, bold twists and kill off key cast members in shocking ways out of the blue early in seasons at the end of the seasons in the middle of the seasons they would kill people off so you always knew people were at risk that ticking clock always kept the urgency going yeah some of the later seasons weren't quite as strong but this is still one of the shows that i've re-watched uh, of action tv shows because i of course love action thriller stuff like this of action tv shows this is the one that i have by far rewatched the most. Real quick before I give you my top three, here's a few more honorable mentions. First off, Gilmore Girls. If you don't know, I'm actually a pretty big fan of Gilmore Girls. I'm actually the one that introduced my wife to the show after we started dating. She introduced me to 24 and I introduced her to Gilmore Girls, which yeah, the way the universe plays out. But funny dialogue, great characters, an amazing cast here. Like Melissa McCarthy was on this show for seven seasons, years before she was ever in Bridesmaids. Sean Gunn is in this show. Bunch of people that went off to do other things kind of got their start here. Next up is going to be Friday Night Lights. Now I'm in Central Texas. They shot the TV show Friday Nights right around here. I mean, the water tower shown in, or the stadium shown in the opening credits is about a mile that way, I can see it out of the window that is right there. And then other things in the opening credits are across the street from my mom's house. By nature, I kind of had to include this one in this list or people around me would disown me. Uh, it's just a beloved drama around here, but also just a, a pretty great little high school melodrama with sports elements inside of it that, uh, yeah, everyone around here kind of absolutely loves this show. Then we have Designated Survivor, kind of a spiritual sequel to 24 with Kiefer Sutherland now as the president, but the show is kind of a mix of West Wing and 24. It has the spy paranoia stuff in it, but it's also heavily about the White House politics with kind of this twist of it of Kiefer Sutherland as the president is only the president because he was the designated survivor after a terrorist attack happens, blows up the people that are everyone in front of him in line. So he was like number 20 in line and he suddenly becomes president. So everyone's like, why are you the president? You're, you should not be in charge of the country but he's the one that survived. Makes for a very cool little show. Another heartbreaking cancellation. This one was canceled two times. It was canceled from main networks after season two. Netflix picked it back up and season aired. I really enjoyed it. And then it got canceled once again. Next one is going to be Stranger Things. Very cool little 80s throwback show that has been quite popular over the last few years. And much like you, I have loved the show too. And then Firefly, a show from about 15 years ago that only lasted one half season. It's a Joss Whedon creation that's kind of a Western in space with Nathan Fillion, Summer Glau, and a bunch of other people. Really cool little show. Never had a bad episode because they never really got an opportunity to have a bad episode. It was really good right out of the gate. Fox bumbled how, or fumbled how they would launch the show, so nobody watched it when it came out. They debuted the episodes out of order, so people couldn't even quite follow the plot line at first, and so it just absolutely bombed. And then... People discovered it when it came out on DVD, became a cult following, and then they made a movie of it afterwards, um, and the movie itself didn't do all that well either. But the people that have seen Firefly 
love Firefly. In third place is Batman the Animated Series. For my money, this is the greatest animated series of all time and the best version of Batman that we've ever received in cartoon or live action form. A lot of that's simply because they got a lot more time to tell the stories, dig deeper into the rogues gallery, but it's also just a really great show in what they were able to do. It has very adult themes inside of it. It had an actual orchestra do the score for it. It's not synthesized. They spent a bunch of money to actually do the score for this children's television show from the early 90s. They brought in talent like Mark Hamill to voice the Joker inside of it. I mean, they Fox, for whatever reason at this point in time, let these guys have incredible creative freedom, gave them a bunch of resources, and they created this show that feels absolutely timeless. When you see it, even when it came out, it felt ancient, but it felt modern at the same time. And because of this unique style that they did with the drawing, and they drew a lot of it on black paper because they wanted it to be so dark, that it makes it kind of exist outside of time. And inside of it, so many fantastic, memorable episodes, a bunch of like the character of Harley Quinn was invented for this TV show. She did not come from the comic books. She came from this TV show and then they brought her into the comic books. She became very popular and now they're giving her movies. That's how influential this show was and how important it was. This, it came out when I was about 10 years old or 10, 11 years old. I was the perfect age for the show when it came out, rediscovered it when it came out on DVD, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. It was like, wow, this actually holds up and now I have the pleasure of getting to show it to my children. I run up is Star Trek The Next Generation. If you don't know this about me, I have always been a massive Star Trek fan. I went to a bunch of Star Trek conventions back in the 90s. Before Comic Cons were the big thing that happened all the time, you had Star Trek conventions, and my mother, my sister, and I were there in costume, doing the whole shebang, and so much of that goes back to us discovering Star Trek The Next Generation. Unlike a, most of the other shows I listed here that are very serialized, Star Trek The Next Generation was very intentionally episodic, standalone episodes. There's a few character arc story arcs that kind of carried between episodes and they would come back to a few things, but most of it stands alone as single episodes that were doing allegorical storytelling, attempting to kind of explore a little bit of an idea or a social issue through storytelling and done very effectively. Of course, you have some fantastic casting here and you have Patrick Stewart in the lead role as Jean-Luc Picard, most of the writing talent here went on to do other things, big things, and especially like Battlestar Galactic came from a guy that worked on Star Trek The Next Generation. And it's also a show that ended before it got bad. They were on, uh, they were doing great, and they went, let's end now and kind of take things over to the movies. Ended with uh, all good things, it was just a fantastic conclusion to the show. So this is a show I've been watching almost my, or basically my entire part of my life that I can remember 30 years and it still holds up to this day. Now, of course, some of the special effects and things like that can be a little bit dated if you're watching it for the first time now, but the core storytelling, the characters, the dynamics between everyone, absolutely holds up. But coming in in first place is The Office. Without question, this is the TV show that I have rewatched the most in my lifetime. And I've only been watching it for 10 years and some of these shows I've been watching for 30 years. My wife and I went to go see the movie Get Smart in summer of 2008 and we went, oh, that was kind of fun. I like the Steve Carell guy. I wonder what else he has done. And that started us watching The Office on loop for the last 11 and a half years. The key thing here is that they found a way to have really nice observational humor about the types of things that you would experience in an office combined with real realistic human dynamics and some of the characters and the way that they have relationships and loneliness and things like that, especially the Jim and Pam dynamics in the first few seasons. And then throw in the mix the absurdity side, absurd side to it, especially in the early seasons that was mostly Dwight and a little bit of Michael's antics. As the show went along, it kind of drifted more towards kind of the broad absurdity and away from these other two elements. But those first four seasons just had an amazing balance of humanity and absurdity, all of it leading to comedy in a show that for whatever reason is remarkably rewatchable. This is just a show that uh, works for different age groups, people that haven't worked in office, people that have worked in office. It's funny, it's heartfelt, it's the one, as I mentioned before, I've watched the most times, so it comes in 
at number one. Remember to share your picks for your favorite TV shows down below in the comment section. If you're interested in Patreon, you can check that out at the link down below in the description. If you want more content like this, check out that playlist right over there. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much.